looking at the idea of energy and we talked about there is going to be a connection that we have with respect to energy and the idea of the of work that we talked about um, already in this chapter uh, kinetic energy is energy which a body possesses by virtue of being in motion and as I talked about yesterday if things are being pushed and being put into motion then we have work being done. So this is energy of motion. So we're talking about two things that are very similar to each other, the idea of motion. And so you're gonna get a connection between your work that we talked about in the previous chat or previous uh, sections and the idea of energy. How we calculate a kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Okay, so if we have a mass of we have a mass movement and the velocity. We want to calculate kinetic energy. We multiply one half times the mass, 10 kilograms times 25, uh, or 5 squared, which is 25. And we came down to a value of 125 kilograms meters squared per second squared. And as we started to analyze our units yesterday, we have a meter squared. We have this meter squared, which is a meter times a meter. That's our meter squared. And if we take out one of these meters here and put it in, or put it outside, we have a kilogram meter per second squared. Well, if we look at the idea of a kilogram meter per second squared, and we look at, say, just a mass, a force of gravity, it, or the force of gravity is your mass times gravity or your acceleration. We have a kilogram here. We have a meter per second squared here. So we have a kilogram meter per second squared, which we found out with respect to a force is the idea of a newton. Well, we have the same kilogram meter per second squared here, which gives me a newton per meter. Well, by our newton meter. Well, if we have a newton meter, this is also what we talked about in the previous section, the idea of work, because we have a force with respect to a distance. If we could talk, or we talked about changing kinetic energy, once again, when you see a triangle there, this is a delta. in the Greek letter system. It is a, an uppercase delta. This is an uppercase delta. We have a lowercase delta, which is this. Looks like an eight without the upper right quadrant eight. This is an uppercase delta. And when we see a delta there, or a triangle there in front of a variable, um, that means change in. Okay, we, we've talked about change in velocity. Our delta V is V final minus V initial. Uh, we can have a change in chemistry, the idea of change in temperature which is T final minus T initial. In algebraic world, we had our slope was defined to us as delta Y over delta X, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, so whenever you see a triangle there, whatever the variable is, you're subtracting two values. And typically you're subtracting off a final value minus your initial value. Your final value minus your initial value. 
Well, when we're talking about the change in kinetic energy, we have our final kinetic energy minus our initial kinetic energy. What did we start out with? What did we end with? If we look at a 50 Newton force exerting on a 10 kilogram mass for five seconds, the initial velocity of the mass was two meters per second. How much work is done by this force? How much work is done by the force? Well, once again, how do we calculate work? Work is force times displacement. Well, the force that's being exerted here is 5, 50 newtons. Okay? But we don't have a displacement. But we know we have a 10 kilogram mass uh, that the force is exerted on for five seconds, and you have an initial velocity, the mass is two meters per second. So we are given that we have time is equal to five seconds. We have a V initial is equal to two meters per second. We have a mass of 10 kilograms. Can we calculate a distance? Distance is can be calculated by if I look back to my linear motion equations. One of our linear motion equations, displacement is equal to the initial p plus one half a t squared. Well, I know my initial velocity. I know my time. Well known acceleration. Can we find acceleration? Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Well the force we have is fifty newtons. Our mass is ten kilograms. Oops. And I don't, I don't state it here, but we could say that's a net force. We'll just give that to be a net force. Times our acceleration, so we have an acceleration of. I mean, per second squared. So I know now an acceleration. I know my time. I know initial velocity. So we can calculate a displacement equal to V initial T. The initial is 2 times our time, which is 5. Plus one half times A, which is recalculated to be five, times T squared. So we have two squared. So 
So our displacement we come up with would be what? We get for a displacement, Jamie. Seventy-two point five meters. So we have a force of fifty newtons. We good with that? We have a force of fifty newtons. We have seventy-two point five meters. So our work. That is done. We can multiply these together. And what do we come up with? Okay, what do you get? 3,645. 3,000 what? 645. And that is in joules. All right, let's look at the second thing that we want that I'm asking for there. What is the change in kinetic energy of the object? So we want to calculate our delta Ke, which is Ke final minus Ke initial. Well, how we find kinetic energy is once again one half mv squared. So I know my initial velocity is two meters per second, which will allow me to find an initial kinetic energy. which is one half times our mass which is 10 kilograms times our initial velocity of 2 squared. So we should have a total of 20 joules there. And that's taking one half times mass times our initial velocity squared. Well, let's look at final velocity. One half mv final squared. Well, the problem is we don't know our final velocity. But can we calculate the final velocity? Yeah. To be final, we can use we can use any of the equations. So to be final is equal to be initial plus A D. Probably be the easiest. We know our initial velocity. We calculate our acceleration, we have our time. So we have 2 plus our acceleration, 5 times our time, which is 5 seconds. So we have, what, 27 there? It's 27 meters per second. So we have one half times our mass, which is still 10, but now we have 27 squared. So if we look at calculating our final kinetic energy, oops, Justin, what did you come up with? Uh, 3,645. 3,000, what? 645 joules. Well, the question I ask here, let's find our delta Ke. 
which is KE final minus KE initial. Or KE final is 36 for 5 joules minus our initial, which is 20 joules. So if I subtract these two, we come down to a change in kinetic energy of what, Emily? Thousand six hundred and twenty-five joules. Well, if we take a look at the amount of work done, which we calculated at the beginning, to our change in kinetic energy, we should hopefully see some similarity. Our work is 36.25, our change in kinetic energy is 36.25, and that leads us to the relationship of our net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Which, once again, we go back to what we talked about yesterday and be in class. When we move objects, we do work. When we move objects, objects move. They have kinetic energy. So there's a direct connection between that kinetic energy and the work that's being done. If I'm pushing this object and I'm not moving it, okay? In the physics world, I'm not doing any work. And if I look at this object, does it have any kinetic energy? No, because it's not moving. Or if I hold a book out to my side, okay, I'm not doing any work in the physics world because the object isn't moving. And you have no kinetic energy there because the object isn't moving. If a constant force is exerted on the object, the object will accelerate. And once again, we can look at this network. Okay, this network is equal to our net force times our distance. Our net work is equal to net force times our distance. Well, if I take a look at my net work, how we calculate our net work is mass times acceleration. Well, if I take a look at these last two here, one of our linear motion equations is V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2 AD. If I solve for AD here, I can subtract my V initial squared to both sides. We subtract our V initial squared, I got V final squared is equal to V initial or minus V initial squared is equal to 2 AD. If we multiply both sides, divide by 2. When I divide by 2, I am multiplying by a half. The division by 2 is the same as the multiplication by a half. What we are left with here is we're left with A times D is equal to 1 half 
V final squared minus V initial squared. Looking at our net work once again is equal to mass times acceleration times distance because it's force net times distance. If I would take and substitute in for that acceleration times distance, what we are left with is this work net is equal to force net times displacement, which is equal to mass times A times D, which is mass, and then substituting in times one half V final squared minus V initial squared. Rearranging, rearranging, we have work net is equal to one half M V final squared minus V initial squared. And if I distribute through, I get my change in kinetic energy. So we once again get reinforcement to the proof of why our change in kinetic energy is equal to our net work. Again, networked on an object is a change in kinetic energy. Once again, delta KE is equal to your network, not your work done by a force, or I, I guess it would be your, your net force of all your forces being put together. But when you're talking about this work net, Okay, once again, this work net is calculated by force net times displacement. And once again, our force net is equal to mass times acceleration. Our force net is equal to the sum of all your forces. These all are connected. Okay, these are all things that we have talked about throughout the class, but we now start connecting them. If I'm talking about my net force, it's the sum of my forces. All my forces add up, which means my force applied plus my force of friction. Uh, if I have an inclined plane, I have a force parallel in there. Okay, it's the sum of all your forces. Now, I don't know if I'll go to this extent and types of the problems or the type of problem. So if we look at a block that's heading down a plane, if it's sliding down the plane, once again, we have our force of gravity here, which we can move into two forces here. We have force parallel, we have force perpendicular, this force perpendicular, most of the time, was also our normal force. 
we have our force of friction here. If we are pulling or pushing on the block, we have a force that's being applied here. So when you talk about a system, you have to take a look at, once again, all your forces. I mean, the possibility of being able to pull or push an object, that's a force that's being applied. You have the force of friction, that's going to be the resistance to whatever motion you have. You have, and if you have an inclined plane, you have a force that is parallel, the force of gravity that's going to slide it down the plane. So when dealing with the sum of forces, we have force applied plus the force of friction plus maybe a force parallel when you're dealing with an inclined plane. Okay, you have all three of those forces that will factor into coming up with that net force. You know, to go with that, when you have uh, constant velocity, when the velocity is equal to a constant, your velocity is equal to a constant. That means your acceleration is equal to zero. That means your force net is equal to zero. Okay, those are all things that are combined together that hopefully you have picked up on as we've gone through this class is when we have a constant velocity, I have no acceleration. I have a net force equal to zero. So it allows me to put my net force equal to zero. My work net would then be equal to zero. Okay. I have, if my velocity is a constant, do I have a change in kinetic energy then? No. If my velocity is a constant, my initial velocity is the same as my final velocity. So if I go 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared, they're going to be the same values. So they will cancel out when I subtract them. So I have no net work being done at that point. Okay? I may have work being done by a force, but I have no net work being done. So once again, these are all ideas that we have talked about that we continue to go back to and continue to utilize as we go through the problems. But as I talked about yesterday, sometimes our recall to these ideas right here is not very good. Okay, And that's what has to be better. That's what's important about I mean, you take a look at that equation sheet I allow you to have. Okay. These are things that you should hopefully be able to locate on that equation sheet. You know, when you go to college and you and you take a chemistry, or if you take a, a, a advanced chemistry test or or advanced physics ideas, okay, they will give you. Most schools will give you. You have one sheet of paper. You can write anything that you want on that one sheet. Anything that you want. So you need to write down, if it's an example problem, that is fine. Or if it's just information you're going to write down. You need to get that down. But you need to be able to look at that and be able to find that and then also utilize it. Just writing it down is not going to make you solve a problem or help you solve a problem. But being able to locate that and then apply that, that's what's going to allow you to solve that problem. Like I said, that's something that we need to continue to work on. A 10 kilogram mass is dropped from a 20 meter, meter building. Okay. Once again, we are going back and rehashing problems that we did from the first semester. From, oh, probably September, beginning of October.
seven 10 meter tall buildings. We have an object. That is 10 kilograms. And we're dropping it. What's the initial kinetic energy? Well, how do we find kinetic energy? Kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Well, if we we're dropping it, What's the initial kinetic energy? Zero. Zero. Yeah, because it's not moving yet. Okay? It's not moving. We haven't dropped it yet. It's just up there. So we have an initial velocity is equal to zero. So we have one half times our mass, which is 10 kilograms, times zero squared or zero joules. But when we drop this object, it's going to hit the ground below. We want to know what's the kinetic energy upon impact. So we want to find a final velocity or a kinetic energy at the very bottom. So at the bottom here, when it hits the ground here, We need to find the final velocity. How do I find my final velocity? Well, the object's moving in a linear path here. It's moving in a linear path, so we can go back to our linear motion equations. The final is equal to the initial plus a t. Uh, displacement is equal to B initial T plus one half AT squared. Uh, B final squared equal to B initial squared plus two AD. We have those linear motion equations that you should, once again, as I talked about, that sheet of paper that you have in equations should be on there. And we should be able to refer back to them and utilize them. Well, which one do we need to utilize to be able to calculate what a final velocity is going to be. Uh, B final square is equal to B initial square plus two A. Yeah, B final square <laughs> equals B initial square plus two A D. So we have zero squared plus two Acceleration is gravity, negative 9.81. And our displacement is a negative 20. We have two negatives there. So we have B final squared is equal to 2 times 9.81 times 20. Once again, that is squared, so we have to use our square root button. Alex, what do you get for our final velocity? Times 9.81 times 20. It's 19. 19.8. 19.8. Oh, yeah. I did it all. 19.8, is that better? So we have 1 half times 10 times 19.8 squared. How many joules of work do we have? How many? How many joules of kinetic energy do we have now, Janae? Uh, 1,960. 
rules of work. Okay. Question is, how much work is being done? Well, we can find our work being done by delta KE, which is final minus initial, or 1960.2 joules of work. What's doing the work? What's doing all of our work here? Gravity. Gravity's doing the work. Well, if we look at force net times displacement, well, what is our force? of the object that we have up there. How do we find the force? 10 times 9.81. Yeah, and if I want to throw the negative in there, that is fine. Displacement is negative 20. So if I multiply 10 times 9.81 times 20, so we get the same thing. Yes, we do. The old adage uh, there's a, is more than one way to skin the proverbial cat. Okay, We have two ways of dealing with this. We have change of kinetic energy. We also have work is equal to force times displacement. We will stop there today. We will look at potential energy tomorrow. The idea of potential energy and what ramifications potential energy has. The world. We all exist potential energy. So, I think I got a lot of fun. I think I see it. So, you can put it.